Oh, hello. Meet Optima Health, your friend for Medicaid coverage. Like any true friend, we can help make life a little easier with discounts on healthy food and gift cards for pregnancy and child checkups. We include vision and medical help 24-7. See more benefits at OptimaMedicaid.com slash hello. It's time to say hello to Optima Health, a health plan you can count on. Live from the back of Ruth the Realtor's car, it's the Stacking Deed Show. I'm Ruth, the Realtor's part-time mechanic, neighbor Doug, broadcasting live from the trunk of her 1988 Lincoln Town Car. On this Halloween show, ooh, spooky, there's nothing more spooky than investing in a property and then losing it. So today, let's help you build a solid financial base so you can stay out of the shadows with your investing game. To get the cobwebs out of your plan, we welcome the creator of the Money Talks with Tiff podcast, Tiffany Grant. In our headlines, here's something scary, real estate seminars. But you might want to think twice before attending the next big name pros event that's coming to a city near you. Why? We'll share. And of course, halfway through the show, I'll share some trivia in my property pop quiz segment that's sure to haunt the rest of your day. And now, two people who I'd say are the exorcist for your bad money habits, Crystal Hammond and Joe Saul Seahai. I always love the way Doug says your name. I'm jealous. Well, it's funny. You, it's funny you say Crystal. that, Crystal, because it's, the whole time I'm doing the intro, I'm thinking, do I have it today? Am I going to be able to go low on <laughs> Joe? How's this going to go? Sometimes I nail it. And as it's happening, I'm like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Here we go. I got it. <laughs> and other times I'm like, no, that sucked. Welcome, everybody, to the Brag About the Open podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am Hello. Joe Hello. <laughs> Hello, listeners. So this is the spooky Halloween ish episode did you know that halloween is one of the top five holidays like for people that spend money do you know what number it is is it one two three four five i I think think it's it's number three i'm saying two it's number two christmas is number one because yeah everybody buys a costume and candy i'm trying not to buy candy sorry if kids were gonna come by because i would eat it all you would have like you're all the kids to, will have to share one piece. You're supposed to buy candy and bring it here to the back seat, Crystal. Ah, yes. Ah, ah, Snickers, no, Three don't. Musketeers, Mm-mm. Almond Joy sucks. Don't do that. Milky Way, ugh, gross. Three Musketeers sucks too. Oh, they're great. No, I'm with Crystal on this. Yeah, you're so wrong, Joe. There's those. nothing. It's like eating air. There's nothing oh, there. Yeah, it's fluff. No, no, that's thanks. called creamy mm-hmm. nougat, according no. to the packaging. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> Twix and Reese's and Snickers, the distant third. The reason I'm glad that you didn't bring candy to the car was because, I mean, you guys already throw enough trash through that little hole in the armrest into the trunk. <laughs> we call that junk the, in the tired trunk. Tired of the wrappers. It's called yeah, junk you, in the trunk. Am I your junk Dude. in the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> well, we did want to call you that, but <laughs> the name fits. Hey, Crystal, we got a great show today, Doug. We got a fantastic show. The Tiffany Grant joins us today, Crystal. Yes, she's a lot of fun. I love connecting with Tiff. We met in person at the Women and Money event. So we were both on a panel together. And so, yeah, I loved her. Like, she's really cool. Before that, though, we've got a big headline. And these things attract lots of people, as Doug said so eloquently. These seminars that are for real estate that come to a town near you. What could go wrong? We'll talk about that, too. So why don't we get going, Crystal? Our headline today comes to us from USA Today. This is written by Doc Lou Allen. Doc writes, Caesar Pena, frequent on DJ MV's The Breakfast Club, gets, wait for it, Crystal, arrested Mm -hmm. for a real estate Ponzi scheme. What's going on here? Not surprised. Not surprised. You're not surprised. Well, okay. So a lot of real estate gurus, they come on, it appears that everything's allegedly that the guy Caesar came on the show to partner with DJ Envy to do real estate seminars. They're like, you know, and they always use now. I hate that 
build generational wealth has become a buzzword. It's totally to, a buzzword. To scam people, though, too. And so they're just, you know, doing seminars. And even if you look, these seminars are packed, too, with people trying to invest. They want to teach you how to invest. Partner with us to invest. Give us your money to invest. And, of course, everything goes south. Like, I want listeners to know, like, you really need to know what to look for when you are doing your research and your due diligence, because some people focus on the glow up. They focus on, yeah, if you follow my plan, you're going to get all these riches. Look at my boat. Look at my yacht. Like, that should be red flags because they're posting a lot of, like, the glow up. And I think a lot of people were saying his wife took down a lot of the Louis bags that were on her Instagram account. Oops. After this stuff starts happening and it's when their focus is just on like the material things and not the actual education, then I believe that's a red flag. And it's just always do your due diligence. Just wait and see. For people who don't know The Breakfast Club, it's a huge show. Nearly huge. as big as Stacking Deeds. Nearly as big. <laughs> just a smidge bigger. And it says here, Cesar Pena, featured on MV's The Breakfast Club, was arrested for wire fraud recently. He allegedly defrauded dozens of victims through a Ponzi-like scheme. MV, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, was not charged, but many allege victims claim his celebrity influenced them. Of course, you know, this guy, Cesar Pena, goes on the show, Crystal, and so it feels like MV endorsed him. I mean, it feels like, even if MV didn't endorse him, just the fact that he sits in a chair in the room with all these people that everybody knows and loves that's a yep. fan of that show makes you think, okay, this is a safe investment, right? Yep. Oh, yeah, that, hey, if DJ Envy's going to invest with him, then I am too. He's given his, you know, approval, and that's where you can go wrong. Like, I really hate that they're forcing a lot of celebrity seminars on us. There are a lot of celebrities I've noticed, and I'm thinking, why would I take financial advice from this celebrity? Look what happened to MC Hammer. That's a celebrity you don't want to take financial advice from. And also think about it. Some of the celebrities that do really great, they have a financial advisor. They have someone taking care of the money, hopefully. So that's the person you want the real estate seminar with, or that's the person you want the financial seminar with. The actual celebrity, yes, you're a good actor, but that doesn't mean that (laughs) you know anything about what setting up a trust and will or you know investing or or in this case buying real estate yeah buying real estate like it's a huge endeavor to get into real estate to buy real estate so you need to know what to do it it's a huge transaction buying my first house that was the biggest transaction that I made of my life so you know I was careful with it and I'm thankful that I didn't have some celebrity endorsing you know the deal or the purchase because hey all these people got screwed. Pena and his business partner, a well-known disc jockey and radio personality, Individual One, this piece writes, operated a company that conducted real estate seminars around the country. Together, they used Individual One Celebrity to promote various real estate enterprises that Pena controlled. It's interesting. Let's pivot, Crystal, to a piece from the Federal Trade Commission website. Mm. This consumer alert says, yet another real estate scam. This is from a few years ago, but Listen to this. It says, for the second time in about a month, this is back from 2019, the FTC sued a company that falsely promised it would show people how to earn money in real estate to get them to pay thousands of dollars for seminars. And by the way, I just think over my career in both financial media and as a financial planner, this is not a one-time thing. I've been seeing this scam Mm -hmm. for 30 years. This happens so often. In the latest case, the FTC filed a complaint against Nudge, a company that sells training programs and other services to aspiring real estate investors. This is the thing, Crystal, that meshes with what you're saying. Nudge encouraged people to attend one of its preview events through mailings and infomercials featuring TV (laughs) personalities, right? TV personalities from shows like Flipping Vegas, Flip Men, Renovate to Rent, and Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. So they hired these celebrities Mm -hmm. to come to stand next to them And then you don't end up working with the celebrity. The celebrity has nothing to do with it except they're getting a paycheck. And and by the way, the celebrity generally also has no idea that they're involved in a fraudulent scheme by whoever this person is that paid them money. Not at all. And so it goes on to say, how much were the events for sales pitches 
to get people to buy workshops costing more than $1,000. That's nuts. And then, so that's the difference between, like, you really need to get to know who you're investing with. Right. We had a lady on that was on one of the million-dollar listing shows. And did you notice something? She wasn't selling anything. She, she was nothing. here to share her knowledge, share her do's and don'ts. She had some really great do's and don'ts for investing and negotiating and everything else. She wasn't here to put on a show and sell stuff to our listeners. Yeah, this is the reason why we're so skeptical of syndication. Syndication is a process where you give your money to an individual. You end up being like a silent partner in the project. They take your money. They hire the people to do the work. Whatever the real estate project is, you just are the purse while they are the labor. And maybe they put money in too. Maybe they don't. But the key thing there, and this is why we don't like it so much, is because Exactly what you're saying, Crystal, is that people don't know how to do the due diligence. So to walk through that, the last thing, to your point, I want is celebrity. The first thing I want is numbers. Mm -hmm. I want some hard, cold numbers because I want to know how many deals have you done previously? How did those deals work out? I want those numbers independently verified so that I know that I can trust those numbers, right? That I'm not just getting some garbage to the extent that I can. I might ask to talk to other investors. Sometimes people won't let you do that because of disclosure things, but I may want to talk to other people. And even if I do, that part still is even sketchy because, you know, if Crystal, you're defrauding somebody, you're going to send somebody to referrals that you know are going to oh, yeah. tee you up. So. Inside, the referral thing yeah. is tough. Numbers, numbers. How many deals like this have you done? How did they work out? Tell me the details of this deal. When do you think I'm going to get my money back? What are the conditions by which I get my money back? And then what are the returns we think we're going to get? By the way, the returns we think we're going to get, if that number, if they tell you a number that is too good to be true, you need to immediately walk. Like if you're like, yes. wow, like if you immediately go, oh my good, that's fantastic. No, that's not fantastic. It's probably fraud. Right. It's not true because it is. And if they're in a hurry, you know, rushing you to invest, that's another red flag because I know for me personally, what I do, I had a friend <laughs> like invested in one of these gurus, like $35,000 and lost it. It's gone. It's gone forever. And Good luck trying to get that money back also, but it's also, it's just a thing of due diligence. I would definitely reach out to networks and ask, hey, this is what I want to get into. Even if it happens to be syndication, have you done one before? Talk to someone that you trust, like someone that is in the community. It was funny, another pivot, Jay-Z finally came out when people said, would you rather have, what was it, like $50,000 or a dinner with Jay-Z? He's like, take the money. Like, <laughs> why wouldn't you take the money? He's like, I can't help you, you know, with whatever you're trying to do. So just take that money. And so many people debated like, oh, you're going to sit with a great mind. And it's like, no, I can't help you. You are in love with the celebrity. Like you actually need to have a professional for what you actually would like to do. Well, and I think that you bring up another great point, which is when you ask people, you ask smart people, ask your financial, I call them your financial board, which are people you've mm -hmm. surrounded yourself with that are smart people, your financial advisor, your accountant, a good friend who's already walked the walk that you want to walk. Would you do this deal? Mm -hmm. And what would you look at if you were thinking about this deal? Ask those people what they think of the deal. And don't be shy. If this is your friend, definitely ask. Like the question that every answer you don't ask is no. So don't be shy. Ask. They're your friend for a reason. They like you for a reason. Maybe they do want to share everything. And I love to over ask. I'm like, okay, explain it to me like I'm two because five might be a stretch in some <laughs> of these areas. So explain it to me like I'm two. Like, And then if you didn't understand it, don't walk away. Be like, all right, let's go down to one. Explain it to me like I'm still in the womb, maybe, because <laughs> I've just, it's not clicking. Are you even going to understand or, it And if it's not clicking, that's not the investment then for you. it's time to walk. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing. If it doesn't make sense, just walk away. Look at what happened to a lot of the people that didn't understand, you know, like the coins and a lot of people that didn't understand, well, how pyramids work in the first place. A lot of the ML programs, like if you don't understand it, just walk away. 
Uh, Crystal, I bet you're going to link to these in the show notes. Yep. How much you want to bet? I'm feeling <laughs> lucky today. <laughs> well, that's because it's Halloween and we get to go trick or treating after this with Ruth. Coming up next, we are going to go back in time, Crystal. We're going to get in our Halloween time machine because you and I pre recorded while we were at FinCon, which is in- a conference for financial creators. Mm-hmm. We sat down with the Tiffany Grant to talk about the basics. We've had a discussion about people get caught up in these scams because they don't know the basics. Your life becomes a horror story because you don't do the basics. So today, not so much real estate, guys, as getting the basics. We're going to get inspired and we're going to lay a foundation with Tiffany Grant. But to get there, I think Doug's got a property quiz for us. Dieters, I'm Ruth's wrench wielding repair guru, Doug. And just so you know, I'm not wearing this mask and wielding this wrench over my head in a Halloween freak show kind of way. It's just that Ruth's exhaust system is hanging by a thread. And the reason it's on its last legs is that she's driving a lot looking for the perfect property. Obviously, some areas of the world show better during certain months. Texarkana, well, that shows great all the time. But here's today's question. What New England city has ties to notable figures like Nathaniel Hawthorne, Alexander Graham Bell, and the creators of Monopoly? But for some reason, people flock to it this time of year because it's solely known by most people as the home of Halloween. I'll be back right after I tell Ruth that spiders actually increase property value. They keep all the other bugs out, Ruth! Hey there, Dieters. I'm Charlotte's web lover and purveyor of Halloween real estate trivia, Ruth's mechanic neighbor, Doug. You know how when you're buying property, it's got to be just perfect? Well, on Halloween, there's one community that's known as the absolute best place to buy land, especially if you're fans of large crowds for dark reasons. Because this town executed 20 individuals for being witches, including public hangings of four men and 15 women, plus one unlucky guy who was pressed to death. People now flock to this destination. What town is it? Even though the town has admitted all of these individuals were not guilty of being witches, people still come to Salem, Massachusetts to get their eerie dose of Halloween fun. Wait a minute. The words fun and hanging are way too close to each other in this script. Probably not fun at all for the people who lost history's most lopsided game of hangman. But the good news, if you want haunted property, well, Salem might just be for you. And now, let's go from witches to a town that was long thought to be home of vampires, New Orleans, where Crystal and Joe were joined by special guest Tiffany Grant. Live from the floor at FinCon, and we are not sitting on the floor. We're actually on the floor. (laughs) I'm glad you defined that. (laughs) Joe and I have a special guest today. We have the Tiffany Grant from Money Talks with Tiff. So happy you're here, Tiffany. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, now, you've had a real estate journey of your own, right? I did. I did. I bought my house when I was 26, single mom of two kids at that time, and making about $15 an hour, but like we'll talk about in a few, you know, saving up, making sure I had my budget intact and I was able to make it happen. And a lot of my peers were like, how did you do that? And that's exactly how. (laughs) That's fabulous. And what we really wanted to have you on for wasn't real estate expertise, but really there's so many people buying real estate and they're not ready and they end up then maybe losing the house or coming close to losing the house. So you do a great job, I know, of helping people just get that base in order. So let's, let's start there. When you were putting your own base in order and you decided it's time for me to own a house, what did you do first? Yeah, so, okay, so luckily by that time I was already pretty good with budgeting. So I had been budgeting for probably about a couple of years at that point. I had just started getting my credit in order, so that journey was probably about a year and a half in, maybe two. And so, honestly, 
I didn't even think about buying a house when I bought my house at that time. One of my coworkers was actually going through the home buying process, looking at properties. And I was like, well, let me see what I can do, you know? Mm -hmm. And so luckily I already had that type of stuff in order. Like I had some savings, my credit was good. You know, I did have student loan debt because that's a misconception that, you know, you can't get a house if you have student loan debt or car payment. I had a car payment. I wasn't making a ton of money, but my debt to income ratio was like, it was good enough in order to qualify. So, you know, at the time I really didn't have a goal of buying a house. House. It just happened that my coworker was going through the process. She was like showing me every day, like, oh, look at this house. We looked at this one yesterday. What do you think? And I was like, oh. And then my apartment decided they wanted to increase my rent. And so I said, oh, wait a minute. Um. <laughs> well, this is, hold on a second, Tiffany, because this crystal, this is fantastic. You know, Tiffany's doing it as her primary residence to live in, but it's the same for real estate investors because she has the basics already ready when things got crappy on one side and she had the opportunity on the other she didn't have to do a lot of thinking about it you know what i mean she already had the basics ready and she could then just deploy well and a lot of people think you need a lot of money you just need to know how to work with the money that you do have even if you have student loans even if you have a car payment as long as those are two things that you can actually afford and then you've shown that, hey, I can afford this. How do you show that you can afford it? You pay it on time. Well, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, What are you talking about? That's, that's a crazy talk, Crystal. No, but you know what? She said the B word, which I know a lot of people heard you say you'd had a budget for a couple years. How important was that budget to getting that house? Crucial, like critical. Like I would even venture to say critical because had I not known, A, how much I was even making. Like a lot of people walk into, like for instance, they come to me and I'm like, okay, what's your income? And they're like, oh, let me check my pay stub or let me check this or let me check that. So don't even really know how much they're taking home. There's no way that you can reach any financial goal if you don't have that piece and then also how much money is going out. So you have to have those two pieces to start thinking strategically about what do I want my money to do for me versus having money just run the show? Because if it runs the show, it's going to run away. <laughs> right. Don't do the ostrich when it comes to your finances, because that's what a lot of people do when they don't know how much is coming in, how much is going out. When you don't track it, that's when your numbers are way out of whack, too. Mm -hmm. Where do you start if you're doing a budget that doesn't suck? <laughs> so budgets never suck. No, right. It's my favorite word. First of all. As Tiffany's no. nose grows and grows and grows. <laughs> no. So, okay. So how do we start? So first and foremost, you got to get your income down. That's first and foremost, you got to have that because that is our base, right? So once we have the income, then we go down to the expenses. And I tell people, don't even make this difficult. If you don't like Excel, don't jump into Excel. If you don't like apps, don't jump into apps. Just get a pen and a paper and just start writing it down. It's, keep it easy. Keep yeah, it easy. I love pen and keep paper. it simple. If you feel like it's scary, just keep it simple. You can always graduate to different things later on, but when I first started, it was literally pen and paper. I had income on one side, I had expenses on the other side, and how I tell people to structure that is from the most priority. So you're thinking like your housing expenses, your food, things like that, and work down to like the nice to have. So maybe that's like your massages, you know, your nails, whatever, because I do also believe that you should live while you're going through this process too. And so you want to consider all of those pieces, then you can start thinking about affordability when it comes to either your investment property or your primary residence, but you can't do that if you don't know what you're already doing. And then you can start making tweaks. So, and when you're looking at a budget too, don't forget your debt <laughs> because a lot of times that's being missed. You hear people say, oh, your income and your expenses. But yeah, what about your debt? Make sure that's on there because debt to income ratio can knock you out of the game. That's one thing can knock you out of the game. You can have 850 credit score. And if your debt to income ratio is not there, then a lender won't even look the at bank you. Will say no thank no you. thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't afford it. And then that's another tactic, too, because then if you do unfortunately get denied, you get that opportunity opportunity because you already know what you owe, you can say, okay, let me pay this thing off and then that'll put my number right 
to where it needs to be. Exactly, going back to that strategic. But you can't do that unless you have everything laid out. So how did you get the money saved then? Because for people, especially for that first property, that down payment's a bear, right? So how do you get the money set aside for the down payment? Yes, great question. So it was right around tax season. So that was one of the... Refund. Yep, I got a refund around that time. And then I was also in school and I had a grant. So I got that refund around that time. But Wait then- a minute, Grant had a grant. <laughs> grant needs more grants. But she got a grant grant. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> it was right there. I could not yeah. do it. Kate's yeah. rolling her eyes I here. I set it right up for you. It's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then also, I was hustling hard. Like, I was doing Uber and Lyft. At that time, I had already did, like, the two-job things. I didn't have two jobs at that time, but I went through that process to pay down debt and, you know, get things taken care of to set that up. I got rid of derogatories because... I was told, you know, growing up that medical doesn't count. Don't worry about your med- Go to the hospital. It's fine. You know, it'll show up on your credit, but nobody looks at that. That's a lie oh. because... <laughs> but, but those laws have been changing. I mean, they're getting I better, but so. it's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It is making some progress, yes. but I know at that time that was not a thing. Right. And I was denied a, my first credit card for that reason, for the medical bills. And so I was like, okay, I need to make this a priority, get this paid off. So all of that work was done and I was able to have some savings. Now I did have an FHA loan. Perfect. And so I was able to get the 3.5% down. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. Was your down payment requirement? Mm-hmm. It was 3.5%. I had my earnest money ready. I had my down payment ready. And so all of that was just sitting in the bank. But I didn't know that I was going to use it for a house until my coworker was going through. And then I was like, who's your lender? Let me call them and see what they say. And lo and behold, he was like, oh, you know, you're approved for this amount and you can buy a house. And literally from the time I talked to him to me putting an offer was a week. Wow. What? Now yes. that's speed. That is speed. But Tiffany, this was one thing I love about podcasting, and you have your podcast too, is you saw a friend, you know, and we're your friend listeners. <laughs> you saw a friend going through it, and that kind of like that decreases like the scariness of going through something like that. You know, you were able to lean on to her experience like, hey, what lender did you use? You know, that could be a scary part. That could be a barrier where, okay, I don't know who's going to give me money. So people just don't start and people don't try. But you had a friend going through it and then you tagged along. Yeah, literally her entire team was my team. So her awesome. lender, her real estate agent, which I still keep in contact, still refer people to them to this day, still mm. use them to this day. Yeah. And so they were just an awesome team. And I'm glad that I was able to go through that process with her as a friend, but then also getting those contacts and using them myself. It has been phenomenal, not just for me, but now I'm passing it on. You know, a lot of people have used that same team to get help. See, your That's net, fabulous. Your network is your network. Absolutely. Yeah, when you find good people passing it on, you know, in the book, The Millionaire Next Door, there were a couple of companion books that went with it called Marketing to the Affluent and Networking with the Affluent. Mm-hmm. And one thing that Dr. Stanley talked about in that book is that that's the way millionaires work. Mm-hmm. Is a millionaire doesn't go to Yelp or YouTube. They ask somebody who's been there, well, what did you do? Somebody they respect, mm-hmm. like, and they've done it now. You certainly want to do your own due diligence. But if you find a great team and you can follow them, I want to ask the same thing then about like insurance. You know, because then you've got your homeowner's insurance package. Clearly, it's going to be a little different for people buying rental properties. They're going to use a different one. But how did you go about the insurance game? Yeah, so insurance, I actually went to a broker. Mm -hmm. So I went to someone that can shop around multiple you know, companies all at once. So that way I can get the best deal. And so I didn't use the same, you know, because insurance varies so much and so many different factors. Like a lot of people don't know that your credit score plays a factor in your insurance. (laughs) You know, it does. And so your location, your credit score and location down to the address, like all of this stuff Mm -hmm. plays a part. And so you may have to shop around a little bit. That's why I like using brokers for all my insurance, for life insurance, home, auto, everything, because they are doing the shopping around for me. And then they come back to me with what's the best price option. Well, the thing I like there too, Tiffany, is different than just shopping yourself online. You also have a person who's an expert 
who's shopping and helping you shop and looking at things apples to apples, but you're not just stuck on the internet filling in blanks that you're not really sure what you're doing. And then getting a ton of calls afterwards. Uh, <laughs> it's so annoying. Yeah, right. <laughs> the harassment. Right. Well, and then those brokers, do they know what's happening in certain zip codes too, so they know what lenders yeah. are zip code friendly in certain areas too, I'd say. Yeah, there's a guy we work with in Texarkana who he's like the number one person knows exactly our house. And it's funny because before that I had insurance through USAA, which is a fine, ah, f- fine, fine company. But I switched it to Allstate because Scott, our insurance guy, was like, no, 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 because you're here on this property. We get this, we get this, we get this. And they would actually give me a much lower quote through Allstate than I was getting through USAA, which is not usually the case. Yeah, that's interesting. And to you all's point too, I inherited a trampoline. So the previous oh. owner left her trampoline <laughs> on site. You it's know, not I had dangerous. Kids. Yeah. I had kids, she had kids. So she was like, oh, you want the trampoline? I'll just throw it in. I was like, okay, leave it. But I didn't realize that that affects your insurance too. Oh, yeah. And so <laughs> as I was shopping around, going back to the brokers being the experts, they were like, oh, well, yeah. these companies will allow you to have a trampoline and they give you good rates. So let's go with these. So I wouldn't have known all of that and I let them handle that and I was able to get a good rate. Oh, that's so. cool. <laughs> Have you guys heard that horrible joke about trampolines? No. <laughs> it was called a jumpoline before your mom got on it. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Edit. No, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> Oh my Who's goodness! The it's jumpoline. It's so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, everybody. Ouch! It's just right there. You said trampoline. I knew it. We knew it. Every time he says that, we should always say no, or we've heard Who's it already. It wasn't funny. Ivy, Ivy, edit that part. Out. Ivy, that don't not edit it. The cut. Oh no! Ivy, leave that genius in there, please. All right, let's talk about this because once you bought your house, and I think this is even more so for real estate investors. Investors, that's not the end of the journey. Like after that, you're in uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace Hardware, like 87 times. So glad you mentioned that. Because let me tell you about after the same night that I move in, I'm like, oh, we're in our new house. You know, just got the keys earlier that day. Pure bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah pure bliss. Yeah. <sighs> and so I go to run my youngest son at the time. I run, go to run him a bath in the guest bath, right? The whole bathroom floods. (gasps) And the reason is because when you're doing your due diligence and you're doing an inspection, nobody thinks to plug the tub and run water and fill it up. You know, they're just checking for the basic stuff. And so I always give people that. So that way, if they are going through due diligence, make sure they do that. But it flooded the entire bathroom. So the first night I had to call the plumbers. Now, this is where it gets important. So listen up. Make sure that you have savings for situations like that. Because had I not had that, I still had savings like after my down payment, after closing, all of that stuff. And had I not had that, because plumbers, I mean, it was what, 150 at the time just to come out and look, Mm -hmm. you know, just to see what's going on. And then I think I ended up spending like almost a thousand dollars that night because not only that, Then they were like, oh, this toilet's not, um, you know, it wasn't sitting right right or whatever. And so I ended up spending almost $1,000 the same night I moved in, stuff that was easily overlooked in due Mm. diligence because nobody thinks to plug up a tub. Like, I didn't even think about that. So it's always important to make sure that you have savings on top of your down payment and everything else for those situations. And for rental real estate, you actually need two emergency funds. You need your main emergency fund, but then a separate emergency fund for your property that's in a separate spot because... Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to have all your work on your rental house go and then something happens in your own life and it just that compounds everything. Right. And it keeps your stress levels low. It keeps your headaches low because what do we say? You know, you want to be prepared because, you know, has she not had money? That's a total, total disaster. And that's why we stress the importance of your budget and your savings and just knowing your numbers because... 
Yeah. It makes it better. And Crystal, this advice might slow some investors down, but it's a good slow. No. You're not yep. going to get in trouble. It's yep. great. Like, you want to do this ahead of time and do the slow go process mm -hmm. because then you set yourself up for success going forward. Like, had I not had, okay, let's play out this scenario, all right? Yep. Had I not had that money saved up and the bathroom flooded, now we're talking about floor damage, we're talking about water damage, we're talking about maybe mold growing by the time I can get it cleaned up. I have small kids in the house. Like, that is not going to work. And not to mention, that bathroom's gone now. Like, nobody can use that. So we would have not been happy in our new home had we not had that. And so I also want to stress that point because a lot of times people are like, oh, your money needs to make money. You know, it's sitting in a savings is not the best use of your money and, you know, blah, blah, blah. You hear it all the time on social media. But what it does give you is peace of mind. Yes. So it may not give you Interest, the quick, right. yeah, it might not no. give you the quick bucks or whatever, but it's giving you that peace of mind and it's giving you the ability to move whenever you need to move. Like I was able to say, you know what? Plumber, I need you out here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't right worry now. about right. emergency. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The big issue I think a lot of real estate investors have, you work with people on helping them build a portfolio of investments. They want to go 100% real estate. You're shaking your head no. <laughs> I know y'all can't see me, but I'm like, oh gosh. She is shaking her head no. <laughs> yeah, no. And the reason is because, first of all, diversification, diversification, yes. diversification. Yes. You have to have diversity in your investments in all forms of diversity, Agreed. right? All different flavors, all different types, international, you know, all different things. Because let's say, for instance, you're all in on real estate, okay? And you're like, you know what? Okay, here's a good example. Let's say it's a retiree. They're all in on real estate and they're like, this is my retirement plan. Now, we know real estate does not move quickly. Mm -mm. <laughs> it does no. not move quickly. So let's say, for instance, somebody gets sick. Now what? So now you have to wait to go through the whole process of maybe selling your house or whatever the case may be in order to get that money saved up when you could have had, yeah. you know, maybe an HSA or something else that you could have dipped into or even extra savings, you know, right. that you or could have dipped stocks. in. Yeah. Yep. And then also if someone's sick, that puts you in the situation of being a desperate seller and that's mm -hmm. the worst position you want to be in. Yeah, if I you're a people, buyer, yeah, that's what you want, but not as a seller. I think people forget you can't peel off a bathroom when things go bad just to get a little money. <laughs> like you got to do the whole house. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, even in the time like now where there's a lot of short term rental talk and things like that, even that process would take time. Like there's a lot of things that real estate takes time. And so, yes, you have those assets. Yes, that's great. But you also want to think about if something came up, how would you fund that? And so if you have just the stocks or you have, even if you had a retirement savings, a retirement investment, you could potentially dip it now, caveat, you know, there's extra fees if you're not retirement age and all that stuff, but at least you did have something there versus just real estate. So I tell people all the time, diversify as much as possible in many different things. Like I have a Roth, I have a traditional, mm -hmm. I have brokerages, I have my real estate, you know, I have my house. Like there's different things that I'm diversified in. And then of course, within that, all of that has diversification. So you just want to make sure that you are diversified as much as possible. So that way you can hedge against anything. Agreed. Very well said. Mm -hmm. Are you hedged, Joe? <laughs> Are we hedging? <laughs> I, I don't know where to go with it. <laughs> First time maybe ever I'm a little lost I, for words. No, this has never happened. Mission no. accomplished. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, our work here is done. Well, <laughs> Tiffany, you don't only help us here. Uh, rumor has it there is a podcast where people can get more of this goodness. You don't say. Um, <laughs> Isn't that wild? Oh, I was why? like, what? Yeah. 
<laughs> Did you know? Okay, so let me tell you guys. So Money Talk with Tiff um, is the podcast he is referring to that is mine. But I go over a bunch of financial education topics. So stuff along these lines. But I really specialize in budgeting, saving, debt payoff, things around that. And also entrepreneurship stuff. So if you any side hustlers listening, definitely hustle in. But um, <laughs> all types of stuff you'll hear over there. So Money Talk with Tiff, wherever you're listening now. Then also you can find my website, moneytalkwitht.com. And then on socials, at Money Talk with T everywhere, literally. And I'll <laughs> bet, I'll bet Crystal will include that in the show notes if we say please. Oh, definitely. That will be in the show notes. Tiffany, hey, one more thing. Let's just talk about FinCon here because, yes. Crystal, I absolutely, you know, industry conferences are key. And no matter what our Dieter community is doing full-time, whether it's real estate full-time, whatever, going to industry conferences, I think, yes. you got to do it. It's priceless. Who knows? You may meet your Joe at one of these conferences. <laughs> I hope you meet Dream. your Joe. I really Dream. hope you meet your Joe. I hope you meet your Tiff because I cannot imagine my life without coming to that first FinCon back in 2011. And I've been to everyone since. Like, I look forward to this all year. I get sad on the last day just because I've learned so much. I've grown so much and I've shared so much. That's the fun part when you see a first timer and you can't wait to share them with everyone and share all you've learned and share the ropes. A lot of times people say, I can't afford to go. Mm. My answer always is, Tiffany, you can't afford not to go. Yeah. That part. And then also think about how to afford to go. So let me tell you, my first FinCon was 2019. I was brand new. I think I started my blog in 2017. So they had a scholarship, but it was only if you started from January 2018 up until the conference, right? Up until December, I think it was. So you were only eligible if it was a year before the conference. Okay. So I said, well, dang, I started December 2017. Let me just send an email and see what happens. And lo and behold, they allowed me to come on a scholarship, my first FinCon. So That's so cool. Yeah, so you never know unless you ask. And then let me tell you another tidbit. At the time, I was working at a financial firm. So I said, hmm. FinCon finances in there. Let me see if they'll, you know, pay for my lodging and stuff. And lo and behold, they did. So wow. I ended up going to FinCon for free entirely wow. my first year. And then when I got back, I made what it would have cost the ticket and then some. So awesome. I tell people to kind of think strategically too. Like I know, for instance, with this conference, you can apply to speak. And if, you know, if you're chosen, you either get a discount or you get it, your ticket fully paid for. So there's always little avenues, volunteering, you know, yes. doing different yep. things, volunteering at conferences. Sometimes they pay for your ticket. That's great. There so, are ways. That is mm -hmm. true. Absolutely. So definitely get out there. Get to the conferences that are beneficial for you. I'll yes. say that. Because not all conferences are made equal. Right. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, do some homework first. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. To see, there was a conference for uh, real estate investors that happened the week before this one called BP Con, Bigger Pockets Con. Mm -hmm. Probably better for our audience than this would be. Mm -hmm. I don't think you come here if you're a real estate investor. Okay. Certainly if you're creating stuff like we are, if you're you know, creating the podcast, you want to come here and network with other creators. Yes. But Crystal, speaking of networking, it was this conference a year ago where I invited you to the yes. lunch and Tiffany I think Crystal thought it was like a timeshare presentation because <laughs> yeah. I would not like tell her lunch. what it was about yeah. I was oh, like gosh. I got an opportunity for you and I, and I saw <laughs> she secretive. was afraid I was going to start like drawing circles like I was selling Amway or something did he know? say the hundred dollar gift card <laughs> <laughs> That's right. we stay for the full presentation <laughs> so it was a year ago here Crystal that the, we, yeah the idea was born magic began awesome. yeah. Aww. Awesome. And see, that's the beauty of coming to these things. And, you know, I think I bullied Joe into having me on his podcast, <laughs> One FinCon. I was like, oh, hey, Joe, good to see you. Did I think not. I should be on your podcast. Yay. Not true. 100% not true. <laughs> but I, love but it. I say that to say you never know the connections that you'll make. Agreed. And then also people. Because we did meet here, too. Mm -hmm. We met Absolutely. at FinCon as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you never know. You never know who you might meet, who might help, who might you might help exactly. you know, in the process. Yeah. And being in the room together is totally different than being online with people. Absolutely. Yeah. Totally. It is, it is yeah. way Absolutely. better. Absolutely. You have to feel the vibes. You have to feel the vibes. All right, Crystal, let's throw it back to uh, future us back in Ruth's car. Right. Ruth's car. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you again, Tiffany, for chatting with us. Thanks for having me. Ruth. 
We're back from traveling in time. Oh, do you remember we were young <laughs> and way back in New Orleans? A week ago. That was yeah. so forever ago. Yeah. You know, we but, were young and innocent and we were talking to Tiffany Grant. Oh, yeah. That was pre a lot of the parties, too. So my liver is like, go back, go back. <laughs> You know, there's an interesting framework to that discussion with Tiffany, which is if you don't get the fundamentals right, which means having that emergency fund that she talked about, Crystal, and put that foundation in place before you get started. It's going to be slower, but you're not going to regret it later. Yeah, this is definitely, listen, none of us have gotten rich overnight. We're not even rich yet. So we want you... (laughs) It, this is a slow process. This is an eventual. If you want get rich quick, you're listening to the wrong podcast because it's not going to happen. Like unless you're a lottery player, and I don't even condone the lottery. But if you don't have that foundation set, you're setting yourself up for a nightmare and a really hard time. Having peace of mind and that emergency fund, because just like Tiffany said, when she bought that place, if she didn't have that emergency fund to get that, was it plumbing yeah. fixed? then that would have taken her out. That would have been a stressful time. So we don't want you to have a stressful time. If a tenant calls you, we want you to say, all right, plan B, enact that plan B. I've already planned for this. So we want you to have that plan in place because it makes it What was that topic we did recently on Stacking Benjamins, Doug, about do hard things and your life will be easier? Mm. I think this is kind of that case. Yeah, we just did that on a roundtable show and it was a great discussion. Yeah. Oh, the phone. Oh, that All is. Right. Okay, I'll get uh, it, get it. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Hi, this is Kelly. I've been listening to the show, and I might be interested in invest- starting to invest in real estate in a year or two, and was wondering about what other resources I can look at besides this podcast, like books or whatnot, to get started, and if I should really be looking at... Real estate investing or just REIT. Thanks. Bye. Did, did, did. Great questions, Kelly. Did she just knock over a bank and she's running from the police? What? <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> wow, I think Kelly's out on a morning walk. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, that's good that she was thinking of us and on our walk because I know I listen to podcasts while I walk. That's like my treat to listen to podcasts while I walk. So and this is, I by the way, an audio only podcast, but I love Crystal in the backseat of the car, moving her, walking. moving her shoulders. Yeah, like I'm walking. Doing the walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about the difference first between a REIT and buying an investment property. So you buy an investment property, you're buying one property, you are solely responsible for everything to do with it. All the success is going to be because of you. All the failures are going to be because of you. When you purchase a REIT, a REIT is a real estate investment trust. It's like a mutual fund for real estate. So you're putting your money in with a bunch of other people's money. That has a professional real estate manager who's deciding what properties to buy. Generally, by the way, with a REIT, you can look those up. Are you buying office properties? Not wonderful right now. Am I buying commercial properties? Am I buying nursing homes? What type of thing am I buying? Your money goes in with a bunch of other people's and you get the results based on whatever they get. Real estate investment trust over a long period of time do about as well. The North American real estate index does about as well as large company stocks do historically over time. Doesn't mean they're going to continue, but they have for a long time. So I really like buying a REIT, but I do like for people that really like hands-on investing, you can do better than a REIT if you invest in a property yourself. But here's Kelly, the caveat, and I guess Crystal this is where I'll bring you in, is that you got to be somebody that doesn't mind, in some cases, a lot of work, like your property in Chicago you're working your butt off. You've been working quite a while on it. And this thing is still at the beginning stages. Oh, yeah. So it just depends. I'm a fan of diversification. So you can do a little bit of both, but definitely know what you're getting into because I'm developing these vacant lots and I bought the first lots in 2017. But my vision wasn't that one day I'm going to develop it. I thought a fancy developer was going to come in and then I would sell it, you know, at a really great price to the developer. Hey, no one ever came. So it looks like I'll be the developer. So since 2017, I've just been paying the taxes, paying the taxes. And I've been patiently waiting for the right connection because everybody has known my goals as far as real estate. 
And so finally, a friend of a friend was like, hey, reach out to this guy because he's in real estate on the south side of Chicago. This is a person that I knew, went to college with. And so that met my comfort level criteria. And then I started looking around, okay, what are you doing and how can you help me? And that was priceless. And so going back to the first part of your question about, you know, other resources and whatnots, I like the and whatnots, but <laughs> we talked about the whatnots. The whatnot are these celebrity, real, yeah. you know, the seminars. seminars. Like that's a, definitely a not. But like when I started at the, my local roundtable, there was a local real estate roundtable. They met once a week. And I got to know everybody, you know, each week after week, or I think it was monthly. They were just there to share, hey, I bought this property on this street. I used, this is what I paid for it. I used this construction crew, and this is what we fixed, and this is how much I paid this construction crew to fix it. And then I refinanced after however many months they would share exactly how long it took. And they would say, and then I refinanced with this bank and this lender, and this was my ARV, the after repair value. And then this is the next project that I'm looking to do. So the more you sit in those meetings with like-minded people, you're learning. And they have like, what, bigger pockets. That's one of the online forums that does something similar. Yeah. There are a lot of meetup groups. There are some Facebook groups. Just vet the Facebook groups because there are a lot of AI people in the Facebook groups now. And they're answering or asking And that's questions. also a, a big home for scammers. Yes. I mean, scammers can see a home. lot of people at once. I really like the hyper-local group. Mm-hmm. Nick, my son, owns 14 rental properties in the Detroit area and uh, lives in Seattle, by the way. That's a topic nice. for another day. Yeah. But he went to Detroit and was there on the ground for a while and went to those meetings, Crystal, to yep. begin building his team. And that was how he developed a close network of people in the area that now has progressed where it's all via email and text messages mm -hmm. with these same people. But they know him. They've seen him. They've worked together on stuff before. And so he's got a list of we call them who's he's got a list of who's that he can <laughs> look out for. Well, it's kind of like this guy you went to college with, right? He's your who. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And so that's a good point too, because I've been in Chicago now once a month, almost all this year, because I'm laying that foundation. I'm showing my face at the different meetings and meetups. So I'm back to this slow process of, you know, not jumping too fast, but going to Chicago visiting like and talking to people and seeing like okay who did they use for this just like at that builder the build conference that i went to yeah. which i got an awesome headshot from you, but you did. free headshot that's doug another was, doug was commenting on that we didn't even know he could <laughs> we even know there were lights in the trunk that he could see right. the headshot <laughs> he's sitting back there like a glow worm just his <laughs> face is glowing in front of the phone <laughs> <laughs> I just like the image of Doug as a glowworm. <laughs> that's a new one. But Kelly, that's a long way of saying that, listen to what a pain yep. in the ass that is for a lot of people, right? Some people mm -hmm. get energy from that. Other people like hard pass. So the re is pressing the easy button. You're going to get results much like the stock market. If you either want to try to get results that are higher than that, or number two, you really don't like the fact that in the stock market or in a REIT, you are a passenger. You're not the driver of that investment. Some people just need to be the driver. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. then buying real estate you can also, by the way, diversify your housing projects. Now, my son decided not to do that. He owns 14 different properties, but he decided, I know Detroit. I want to go where I know it really well. And Crystal, in all the interviews you've done so yeah. far, we've seen both sides of this work, right? Mm -hmm. Get really local and know the community like Nick has. Or on the other side, go, you know what? If things fall apart in Detroit, I don't want to be there. I want to be in these different places. But it's also going to be harder then if you're in a bunch of different communities to beat what a REIT's going to do. Let's talk about resources that you like. What resources would you point Kelly toward? Well, definitely the local groups, the small groups like meetups, I like in person because even people who are going to screw you over, they're not coming back week to week. And just like the contractors, the person would pour it out, hey, this contractor stopped showing up after I got, you know, they got the first payment. So that's a good thing. 
online, like just for information, YouTube has been my go to. Like I would just Google because I went down a rabbit hole of I Googled how to build a fourplex. And so I watched all these videos on people that were just going through the process just so I could get a feel of what it's like. I've even considered volunteering with Habitat for Humanity just to see, you know, go through the process because they're still building houses and you can volunteer and learn a lot of stuff from just volunteer work too. But I like YouTube. I follow a lot of people on Instagram, the Rants and Gems. That's a good podcast. Obviously, Bigger Pockets. That's another good one. Any book almost from any guest. Yeah. There. Oh my God. Yeah. Because the neighborhood. But oops, I dropped my pencil. We often, people don't understand, I think, sometimes about how podcasts get created. To some of these people, they're so busy. The only time you can get them is when they have a book. Yeah. So I understand when, you know, people go, well, you only talk to people that have books. Well, that's when they're available to talk to you. And so <laughs> we, t we try to dive into what they do. I'm not in the business of being somebody's bookseller. I'm in the business of talking mm -hmm. to smart people and getting as much out of them as we possibly can. And if you want more from that person, we're also in the business of curating smart people for you. So I'm with you, Crystal. We've curated the heck out of all these people that we've talked to. You dive into mm -hmm. any of those guests we've had in the past. I think that's a good place to start as well. And one of the books that I've been almost using as a reference, the one Accelerate Your Real Estate, Build a Hands-Off Rental Portfolio with the Scale Strategy. That was Palak Shah and Niti Jamdar. That book just goes into so many, and they're fellow engineers like me. So they think like, the, <laughs> like they speak my language. So also, that's also important. Find somebody who speaks your language. Yeah. Sometimes when I just don't connect with somebody and that's fine. You don't, you're not going to connect with every single person, but you are going to find a connection with someone. So I say, you know, try all the mediums, see which one is easier for you. I'm a book person too. Yeah, I think Coach Carson, the books that he's written. Oh my gosh, yes. Great. And also a guy who's in real estate teaching for the right reasons. I think we can definitely point people toward him and be, you'll be happy that you did. And it's in the show notes too, www.stackingdeeds.net slash show notes. And there's always a link to our book recommendations in there. And also just a little bit more information about whatever guest we had. Too. You mentioned earlier on, you referenced our guest that has been on one of those big Bravo shows. That was Vicki Barron. Yep. And man, if you're in the business of selling real estate, if that's your goal and listening here because you want to sell real estate, both our interviews of Vicki Barron and with Joan Herlong were fantastic. And Crystal, I know a lot about selling real estate. I know a ton about it. I've talked to a lot of people about it. Mm -hmm. I learned a bunch of really cool stuff from both of yeah. those women. Yep. As buyers, I've learned so much too. Yeah. Cause Vicky was episode 24. Joan was 29. Yeah. Good people Those there. Very All right, people. Kelly, I hope those are great resources for yes. you and we'll thank link you. Thanks for heeding our call to hear other voices. <laughs> and I loved your voice. Cause listen, I walk while I podcast too. So I like that you stopped what you were doing, even if it was a workout and, and talk to us. Wait, you walk while you podcast? Are you walking? While right I now? listen, oh, while I listen. listen. Okay. And then if, if I love the podcast enough and they're like, Hey, we want to hear your voice, ask a question. I'll do it while I'm walking. Well, there you go. And how do people ask us go. questions? They also go to our website. Yep. Stackingdeeds.net slash voicemail. Awesome. That's going to do it for this week, everybody. Hope everybody has a safe Halloween. Yeah, don't eat too much candy. Oh, don't crystal, don't, be, don't take all the fun don't out do of the it. Crystal, Come on, don't geez. do the crystal. Don't do the crystal. And oh, so we also have the honor system. So the neighbors, they leave the candy bowl outside with their door closed. They're like, yeah, just take one, please. And every time I walked by, I took one. So I just kept walk, finding reasons <laughs> to walk by. So I took one every single time it's I just, walked by. That's so, horrible. So. <laughs> That might be a scam. What? That is Crystal's version. I waited. They left it out all night. So even by 11 p.m., there was still candy left. I'm like, there's no kids no. coming now. Let me just keep yeah, walking that's... by. 
Coming up next week, Kate <laughs> Horrell is going to join us. We're going to get tactical, Crystal. Like this week, we went fundamental. Next week, yeah. Kate has used something a lot of real estate investors either don't know about or they're sketchy on, and that's called the 1031 exchange. We're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about a Delaware statutory, Delaware DST. statutory trust. DST. DST. Yeah, you know me, the DST. Yeah. And <laughs> so corny well and that's good because our listener he had a question about that so we're actually going back to another listener question awesome so Dieters, keep them coming better. we'll see you on the next show she's crystal i'm joe doug what should we have learned today Well, Crystal and Joe, first, take some advice from Tiffany Grant. Invest in building a base before investing in real estate. Sure, it's slower, but this way, you won't have regrets later. Second, heed our spooky headline. That seminar in your town by some big real estate name? It might make someone rich, but in most cases, it ain't you. But the big lesson? I love Halloween. Except the size of the candy bars. Fun size? As comedian Jeff Garland says, more like frustrating size. If I show up at your door, pony up the full-size stuff, people. Thanks to Tiffany Grant for joining us today. You can find Tiffany's podcast, Money Talk with Tiff, wherever you're listening to us right now. We'll also include links in our show notes at stackingdeeds.net. Oh, hello. Meet Optima Health, your friend for Medicaid coverage. Like any true friend, we can help make life a little easier with discounts on healthy food and gift cards for pregnancy and child checkups. We include vision and medical help 24-7. See more benefits at OptimaMedicaid.com slash hello. It's time to say hello to Optima Health, a health plan you can count on.